Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Welcome to all of those of you who have joined us via Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin our service with our opening chant, God is all there is. Join in prayer to know that truth at an even deeper level. That truly, God is all there is. There's this one life, this one infinite love, intelligence, and creativity of God, out of which everything comes into being. And that resides at the center of all creation, that every attribute of God lies at the center of each and every one of us gathered here for this virtual service this morning. I absolutely know that we come together feeling the calling of this one for greater knowingness, a greater realization, a greater experience and expression of itself through each of us. And that we're saying yes to that and that automatically God is always saying yes back. And so I know that every part of this service supports that deep intention of our souls for greater knowingness of the divine. I know we are absolutely uplifted by that vibration of God's love that binds us all. I know that we feel its vibration inspiring and working through each and every person who is of service this morning. I know that we are uplifted by the beauty and the artistry and the inspiration of our musicians, Sam, Karen, our soloist, Reverend Karen Mitchell this morning, practitioner Dean Regan, who leads our chants. And I know that we hear the message that we have come to hear through Dr. Mark, that this is the message that awakens us to that pure love and goodness that lies at the center of our being so we can experience it more fully in our lives. And so how grateful I am for all the healing and revealing of goodness that I know occurs throughout our time together. Giving thanks right here, right now for all the blessings. I release this word knowing it's already so in the mind of God. Our time is blessed and so it is. Together we say, Amen. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within. 
ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within, ever present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. And so now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And so now let's join in singing our congregational hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. I once was lost, but now I'm but now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to sing And grace my song released How precious did that grace appear The hour I first So now we give ourselves that opportunity to just get still for five minutes and to meditate, to commune with that presence of the divine that lies in each of us. And so I invite you to get still, to close your eyes, and for the next five minutes, just silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I will bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
I can cry about my day, say everything went wrong. No one sings their song my way. <laughs> or I can laugh about my day, the good it really brought me, the patience you taught me each step of the way. Whatever the question, love is the answer. Whatever the lesson, love is the answer. Whatever way we choose to live, love is the answer. Love is the answer. about my life say everything went wrong no one's ever on my side or I can laugh about my life the kindness you've shown me the love that has grown me each step of the way Whatever the question, love is the answer. Whatever that lesson, love is the answer. Whatever way we choose to live, love is the answer. Love is the answer. All the ways I tried to save my broken heart. alone into the wind I never knew love was right here from the start and all I had to do was go within whatever the question love is the answer Whatever that lesson, love is the answer. Whatever way we choose to live, love is the answer. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. Great, Reverend Karen, thank you so much. Wonderful to have you. Well, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Uh, welcome to Virtual Church, and we're so glad that you are here. Um, in Science of Mind, uh, a very basic tenet of our philosophy is that our thought is always, always creating. Now, I would say especially a clear, focused, persistent thought. And this now, right now, at this time, I think is the time we have been preparing for. This is the time to go deep spiritually. There is not going to be any better time for us to say, you know, I should get really serious about my spiritual practice. I should really pray every day. I should meditate. I should take some time to listen to the spirit within. Um, I would ask us to think about what do you clearly focus on? Because science of mind teaches us that is what you are in the process of creating. Do we focus on the news? Or do we focus in consciousness on a place of peace? Do we focus on 
the activity of discord in the outer world, or do we focus on the still small voice within and know that all is well in the mind of God? You know, people don't know what they really want. This is always so interesting to me because when I talk to people and say, well, what is it? What is it you want in life? And I'm like, well, they know what they don't want. They can be so specific and give me extraordinary details about what they don't want, which, okay, but I want them to go 180, and what I want is all those details about what they do want, why they want it, why it's compelling for them, why it's important. Um, I think that uh, when I'm talking about uh, what you want, I'm thinking like, where is your desire? Where's your yearning? Where's your passion and intense longing? And, and I know people say to me so often that they're, well, I'm just confused. I don't know. I feel blocked. I would say, look at your immediate life. That's a perfect place to begin. What do I need right now? Do, what, uh, or maybe another way is, what is missing right now? Um, and you could start with, say, okay, what's missing spiritually? Oh, maybe I'm not taking enough time for myself. What's missing mentally? Maybe the conversations I'm involved in, uh, maybe the stuff I'm reading or watching is not feeding me the kind of uh, food I need mentally to raise my consciousness up. Maybe emotionally I'm in the tank, in which case I have some work to do there, or maybe physically I might be challenged. I want to check in with all of those, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, to see, all right, how, how am I doing? What do I need? Is there anything missing in any of these places? You know, because for us in science of mind, it would be so easy to just focus on external things, but we have to take our attention from the outside world, right, which is always changing, which is always, you know, giving us all kinds of uh, stimulus. We have to take our attention from that outside world and ask, where do I need healing? Where is it that I have to love more? Where do I have to have more compassion? Where do I need to forgive more? Where do I need to be more giving in my life? Right? The, the, I understand that today, in our world, all of us, we probably have lots of desires, but I would ask us today to think about an area where we are willing to focus. Because, you know, we are creating all the time. That's one of the things I love about the science of mind teaching. We are always in the process of creating something. Now, I'm not going to ask you to go too far into the future. I want to know what are your right now desires. Now, remember that God, spirit, the infinite mind has no judgment on your desires. I believe, in fact, that your desire is the way God gives to you because that's the way spirit is going to experience a greater expression of itself is through you embracing uh, some desire that you have. Um, say you feel stuck or, uh, I don't know, agitated. I've had that lately. Frustrated, yeah, I've had some of that. Depressed, oh, we're on speaking terms, absolutely. Ask yourself, what would I like instead? What would I like instead? Because remember, we are always, always creating what we're focusing on. So if we're saying the world is going to hell in a handbasket, it certainly will be. But if what we say is, you know, we are moving through a cleansing right now so that something greater for humanity can emerge, so that all people can feel loved, that all people can have their needs met. This movement in consciousness that's taking place is going to reveal a greater good. If we are knowing that, then that, if that's what we're focusing on, that would be something worthwhile to create. You know, I think what people also do that's so interesting is that people have like God gives us an idea because that's the way God gives to us. God gives to us through the realm of ideas. So God gives us an idea, and then what people do so often is we reject it, right? Uh, uh, you know, but if, if that's what you would really love, we must not reject that. We can't allow ourselves to be shamed or reasoned out of it or think it's too grandiose or I'm too old or I don't have the train. Just stop that. Stop that. You know, if we're blocked around our desire, our desire to experience and express and create in life. If we're blocked, I would say first we look at our immediate needs. What's missing right now? Okay. And then I'd say, are we substituting someone else's rational goal for my own desire, for my own experience of greater expression? Or am I dismissing my own desires as unimportant? You know, or maybe unrealistic, which is even worse, I think. See, I know if we would all consider ourselves blessed, 
um, look, I know lots of people are going through really, really difficult stuff, but I also know that many of us are very, very blessed through this very, very difficult time. And if anything, anything good is in your life, you sh we've got to be grateful for it right now. Now is the time to implement that practice, that spiritual practice, and it is a practice of being grateful for what is good in our life. If you can feel and sense um, what I'll call like a soul desire, to express creatively, to share your love, to give your best to the world. I think, for me, this is where real happiness comes from, you know? And this is not about manipulating or hurting or taking advantage of anybody or anything like that. I think you're, this is what I've come to realize after uh, 35 years in the science of mind teaching. Um, it took me a while. Sometimes I'm a very, very slow learner. Um, that your dream is never in the hands of somebody else. That was huge for me because I realized that that dream is something of spirit, something of God, something of the infinite within me that is rising up, seeking expression in the world. It is something unique to me as yours is unique to you. So when we think about what we want to create more of in our life, I don't care if it's on a global level or in our personal life, I think if it's important to us, we will give it our full attention. Wouldn't you agree if it's really important, you would give it some of your full attention on a regular basis? Obviously, we're not going to give it our full attention all the time, but some of our full attention on a regular basis. And we would make it a priority that that's something that we are creating in our life because we are such incredibly creative beings. And also, I want to say, you know, this is what I think where people often sell themselves short. In, in our teaching and in this kind of philosophy is they don't give themselves enough time in consciousness. People want to spend all their time in the outer world doing things that they think are going to produce them results. This is what's going to make a difference. This is what's important. But we teach in the science of mind is that everything starts within. Everything starts in consciousness. And so as within, so we start to experience the without. Ah. You know, something in us has to be able to conceive of a greater good. And if we do, and I suspect we all do, I think that is a direct revelation from the universe, from God, from spirit. Hmm? Um, I think that one of the great tools we have been given, certainly to evolve from feeling a consciousness of separation into a consciousness of being a co-creator with God, I would say is our imagination. I think our imagination is a sacred spiritual tool. Uh, because our greater good is seeded through our imagination. It, in your imagination, I think what we do is we nurture that desire that's been in our heart, and we keep it safe while it grows and develops. At least, I hope that's what we're doing. Because I think when it's in its infancy stage, we have to keep it safe. But see, using our imagination, what we'll be able to do is we will be able to expand our dream until it can no longer be contained and actually our dream is going to insist itself into being, you know, because it is so alive and so full in every way and so well fed in our imagination. So I think the, our, our imagination is the birthplace of possibility. I'm talking imagination from that deep, desiring, soulful place that we all knew as children. So a while back, um, gosh, it, it, uh, uh, my sister and I uh, had a day where we were helping... Uh, we were cleaning out my mother's house because my mother was going into a care facility. And, uh, and that, was a, that was a fairly emotional experience, you know, uh, kind of looking at mom's entire life and what we have to do with it now. Everything that she'd amassed and collected, everything that was important to her. So anyway, in my mother's uh, hope chest, uh, my mother was from a generation of women who they all had a hope chest before they got married. And this is where she would put very special, significant, save forever kind of things. Um, we found our report cards from elementary school. And um, I don't think I had even thought about that probably in 50 plus years. And so <clears throat> my sister and I are <clears throat> sitting on the floor in the bedroom, in my mother's bedroom, and we've got these bundles of report cards from when we were in about the first through maybe sixth grade or something like that. 
And so, of course, I was dying to see what my report card said. I mean, who wouldn't want to know how people saw you when you were five, six years old, you know? So, you know, I, I wasn't that interested in the grades, I, because back then the teachers used to write comments on your report card every term. And you know, it was funny. I, I, I can see, I can see the handwriting of Mrs. McLaughlin and Mrs. Cody, my first and second grade teachers, and both of them, they said the same thing every term. Every term. Mark is very, very social. He loves to talk to his neighbors. He is always talking, or Mark is looking out the window daydreaming. Those were my two extremes. I was either chatting up the rest of the room, or I was off somewhere and dreaming of, of, of something else. You know? And I thought, wow, they had me pegged. They had, they had, you know, at six years old, they absolutely got me. They knew, they knew who I was. Um, but you know, for me, and I believe in our teaching, your imagination is a very sacred place. It's the birthplace of possibility, right? Uh, anybody can see some of, of what's in front of them, right? But if we begin to look with our imagination, we'll be able to see what is not earth plane fact right in front of us. Um, you, I, I think about it like this, that everything that's ever been invented was first imagined. Isn't that great? I mean, and so those things actually didn't exist in form before somebody imagined them. So my desire may not exist in form, but that points the way for me to learn, like, I have to start imagining it. And of course, when I'm talking about imagining, I'm talking about getting every sense involved that you can. Because Ernest Holmes says in Living the Science of Mind that feeling, consciously directed feeling, right? So consciously directed feeling is intelligent creation. So if we can, create the consciousness where all of these feelings, these good creative feelings that involve every one of our senses, where we get a visual, you know, and we hear things, and we say things, and we taste things, and smell things, and, and just get every sense involved, I think our imagination becomes an extraordinarily powerful tool for us in the creation of a greater good. So, my challenge this week um, was to see our nation's capital as a peaceful place, as a center of light. You know, regardless of what was happening on the outside, because I know that you know, the United States of America is a divine idea in the mind of God. Right? So even though it might look like there is some chaos out here, we have to first imagine how we want it to be, how we know it could be, how in fact we believe it to be in the infinite mind of God. So getting all our senses and all our emotions is really vital, I think, to making our imagination be the most effective tool for us that it could be. I think we're good in our imaginations when we're afraid of some future event. You know, people can just get themselves so stressed out and worked up. You know, they vividly imagine that worst case scenario. But what about the best case scenario? I don't know what your best case scenario is right now today. But think about that with me. What would be a best case scenario for us personally? All right, you got something? What would be a best case scenario for America? Yeah, so whatever that is to you. Now, with your imagination, with this sacred spiritual tool, could you see our country being the place that you imagine? Could you see your life being all that you imagine it to be? Now. Unlike Mrs. McLaughlin and Mrs. Cody, I'm not going to say that you're just daydreaming out the window. I'm going to say that you are using <laughs> a sacred tool that God has given us to evolve and grow and help to heal our lives. I think we need to imagine something first in our hearts, is what I'll say. That we imagine first in here. Um, and how I am about things, you know, I think it's not that spiritual things are secret or that they have to be private. But I think that when we're working on spiritual things, 
until they have burst forth into form on the physical plane, they are largely very sacred. And when something is sacred, you just don't go blabbing it around to everybody because you know people can only support you at the level of consciousness that they maintain for themselves most of the time. So even though they love you and they care about you, they can't rise higher in consciousness to support you than they can do for themselves. So it's not that people don't love you or care about you or your desire. Sometimes it's just smarter, particularly while our desires are in their infancy, to keep them close in, to only share them perhaps with your practitioner or someone who is supporting you and having growth and healing in your life. You know, Job said in the Old Testament, the thing I fear has come upon me. Well, if that is so for you, we want to use the full power of our imagination to invoke an internal experience of what we really want. Okay? So what's happening out here is not what I want. How do I get to that place in my mind where I can see something that is happening the way I want? Like I want to see our world be a peaceful place. I, in my imagination, I see our world as a loving place. I see our world as a place where skin is not the currency. The color of your skin is not the currency. Where everybody, everybody, everybody are brothers and sisters and we get along and it's great to be together and everyone's needs can be met. That's what I have in my imagination for us. Now, I don't know what you have, but what's in my imagination is the blueprint that, that I get to work on, you know? So, so your desire, I think, has to be true for you, whatever that is. And, and of course, obviously, in the science of mind, we would say your beliefs, your thinking, your speaking, your action absolutely have to support that. Hmm? I, think I was thinking this morning, as, as, as I was just having my quiet time and drinking my tea, I was thinking, someone years ago started to imagine that we would go to the moon. It's like, wow, that was some serious imagination. I mean, think about that that we would go to the moon, that we would investigate Mars. Someone's imagination thought of the internet and Facebook and organ transplants and on and on and on. I think for each of us that our imagination is one of the ways that spirit is whispering to each and every one of us all the time. You could be more, this could be more, this could be better, it could be peaceful, it could be healing, there are alternatives. I, I feel like spirit is, is saying that to us all the time. So if imagination were like a garden, then I'd say that worry and doubt are the weeds. Yeah, and, and if they spread those weeds, that worry and doubt, they will take over. I understand that, you know, so often the weeds in our life are, um, are scary and they prevent us from imagining what we really want. We say, oh, God, there's so much competition or the chances of succeeding are so slim and yeah, but what if I fail and it's not logical and, you know, don't get your hopes up because, you know, everybody loves low hopes. That's just really sensible, right? And, and, and this one, I like it when people say, well, come on, be realistic. What is that? Be realistic. Be realistic is meet my low expectations. Yeah, that's what be realistic is. It usually shows up just after you declare your dream, where somebody says, you know, you need to be realistic. I would hate to see you be hurt or disappointed. Oh, take a hike. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, that, that's not how I want to live my life, you know? We want, yeah, so so the, the weeds, we want to eliminate them before we become a problem. Um, the other thing I think is important, just because in our philosophy we have such a different take on things like this, there, there is no envy of somebody else in their, in their dream. I think it's all inspiration. Yeah, because they're showing you what's available. They're showing you what's possible. From the infinite sea of all possibility, they're saying, hey, you could create this, you could create this, how about this? And we should see it all as inspiration. The universe is showing me this to show me what I may yet be. So, I don't know what area your greatest desire is. If you don't know, then you have to ask the spirit of God within you to show you in a way you understand and can use. 
Show, spirit, I, I say that all the time. Spirit, you know I'm dense sometimes, so show me in a way I can use, show me in a way I understand, show me in a way where it is absolutely clear, because you know if I can misconstrue it, I will. That's just a little gift of mine. So I would like us all to join together in consciousness now, and we will set about using our imagination as a sacred tool it is. So we join in consciousness now, recognizing that right here where we are, the spirit of the living God, that presence of truth and life and love, that's everywhere in the universe is right here, uniquely individualized as each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And in this awareness of our oneness with this creative presence, I speak the word that we are keenly informed from that presence of spirit within as to where we should be headed and what our most pressing desire in life is. So whether it's something spiritually or mental or emotional or physical, we remember that God has no judgment on any desire as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. And since God has no judgment on it, we open ourselves fully and completely to receive. Because God always says yes. We believe that this universe is always saying yes to each and every one of us. And so we have a big yes back to the universe. We have an incredible capacity to receive and grow and heal and thrive. I claim for each and every one of us that we see our world as a peaceful, loving, joyful place where everyone's needs are met and people feel safe and secure. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is a raising up in consciousness. So today we let our prayer enfold the entire globe, our earth, our home. We let our prayer touch all people everywhere, touching all hearts, all minds, all consciousnesses, so that all people might remember the truth that they are one with God, one with spirit, and one with each other. So for this and every good thing, I say thank you, God. I release this word into the law of mind. I believe it's done. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed all right I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together from the love of pure spirit within me I bless this gift I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper it is evidence of my faith and belief it does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. just a fantasy that people are born to disagree I say start by bringing peace to your own family and watch it spread beyond where you can see to all those who say our differences are far too great 
people always need an enemy I say start by bringing peace to your community and then change the way you think about everyone you see cause peace is possible when we sing our song together lead the way yeah. peace is possible when we reach out to each other I know peace is possible today and to all those who say the world's too big for me to change it. and one little life can't matter we do and all we have to be is the change we want to see cause peace is possible when we sing our song together and peace is possible when we let love lead the way peace is possible when we reach out to each other Let's keep dreaming, cause reality is waiting there. And peace is possible when we sing our song together. Peace is possible when we let love lead the way. Wonderful. Thank you, Reverend Karen Mitchell. So good to have you with us today. If you'd like to get more of that inspiration from Reverend Karen, you can get it on YouTube. Just go look for Karen Mitchell Music on YouTube. Right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So just want to remind you that uh, donations over the phone, you can call in uh, if you'd like to make a donation over the phone for about 30 minutes after service, uh, and we can take your donation by either credit or debit card. You can also give online, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page, or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. And however you send in those donations and by checks, and we just so, so, uh, thank you for continuing to support us so we can continue to be here for you. After service, if you'd like to have prayer with a practitioner, that is possible on Zoom. Just uh, stay there with uh, the Zoom patio and let the Zoom host know that you'd like to be hooked up with a practitioner and they'll put you in a private breakout room for prayer. You can also email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office, and the number is 818-762-7566. Option four on the phone menu allows you to leave a voicemail message, and we check the messages, we check the emails every day, and get those requests out to all of our practitioners. So we promise to support you in prayer. Wednesday evening service is coming Wednesday. As usual, the meditation starts at 6.50. The service starts at 7 p.m. 
uh, same links on Facebook Live and Zoom. And my topic this Wednesday is 2020 hindsight. I promise it'll be uplifting. I'm not rehashing all the other stuff, okay? <laughs> promise. <laughs> grief support. Uh, our grief support uh, group is meeting on Zoom today. This group is facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Carol Winokur. She really leads this group masterfully, and that will be at 1 p.m. So if you're going through, you know, and there are so many different versions of grief that people experience. Uh, please feel free to join. Journey of the Heart 2021 campaign. So we're really excited. We're still uh, in the midst of our Journey of the Heart 2021 campaign. You can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash journey, where you can fill out your 2021 uh, pledge card. And also you can access the recording, that wonderful concert that Karen Drucker did for us. Uh, so you can watch that. That was back on December 6th. I know several people have told me they've gone back and watched it multiple times. So uh, avail yourself of that. And thank you for joining us in making 2021 our best year ever. Practical mysticism that I'll be teaching starts this coming Tuesday, January 12th. And uh, this really is a wonderful, life-changing course. It's 10 weeks. It's an exploration of mysticism, and it provides a framework for the student to live the mystical life here and now. So it's not just about studying mystics, it's about awakening that inner mystic in all of us. It's open to everyone, but it's a required class for those who are interested in entering practitioner training down the road. Tuition is 245 if paid in full, and 270 if paid in two installments of $135 each. You can sign up for that on the website and get the information on the books that you need. And we do have copies of the books in our bookshop if you want to make arrangements to purchase them and come in and get them. 2021 goal sheet, so we have this wonderful tradition in this church of filling out these goal sheets at the beginning of the year and then uh, turning them into the church and then the church mails them to you at the end of the year. While well, you can still do that, you can get the goal sheets on our website and download them, print them, fill one out, return it to us with a self-addressed stamped envelope and we will mail them back to you at the end of the year so you can see how those intentions manifested in your life. Our Zoom virtual patio, uh, every Sunday and Wednesday before and after service, we start about 20 minutes before service, allows you to stay connected and visit with your fellow congregants. Our men's group meets every Sunday on Zoom from 11 to 11.30, and we continue to have our Zoom meditation Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 a.m. So, for any of those events, just go to the website, nhcrs.org, and you can get the Zoom link to join. And also, if you're not already getting them, you can sign up for our weekly e-blasts and our monthly newsletters. But with that, thank you once again for being with us this morning. Let's join together in knowing, visualizing, imagining, and singing peace into the world. <laughs> Bye.
I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.